What hobby does not get more expensive the more you dive into it? Collecting buckets. I have 7 buckets. The fourth one is also dark blue. That really depends on how long your bucket list is. Chess. Easy to learn. Difficult to master. Resources to learn are freely available on the internet, and it is gaining quite a bit of popularity on streaming websites over the last few months. Edit, if someone new or any beginner want to learn chess, I would love to teach, feel free to DM. Also if you are really interested, please head over to slash r slash chess. Edit 2, my inbox is inundated with replies, and it makes me really happy that a simple comment made so many people interested in chess. If you need any help, please include your chess com or liches or guide or both. Register if new, so that it will be easier to communicate. Edit 3. Going to bed. Will reply in a few hours. Keep up the chess hype everyone. And also the cheese hype. Loads of people misreading the first word. LOL. The Pog Champs tournament brought me back to chess. World crafting. That's pretty much the entire point. Note, world crafting should be practiced mindfully, with sustainability in mind. Take only what you need, leave enough for the plants and animals to live well and reproduce. Abundance is there, but only if we don't harm it. Well now I need to know more. Magnet fishing. All you need is a strong magnet and some rope really and maybe a few other things like gloves. Might even find something valuable one day, if you're exceedingly lucky. I pulled a gun out of a local river. Explaining magnet fishing to a cop you called on yourself is an interesting conversation. Writing. It may even happen that by diving into it, you could earn something. Writing it takes a certain amount of conscious effort to keep prices down though. 1. Knowing that you don't need a fancy computer to run a word processor. You do not need a Mac when a Chroma book or lower end PC will suffice. Nowadays, a Bluetooth keyboard for your smartphone will also work. 2. Knowing that Google Docs and OpenOffice are free, and that you don't need to shell out money for manuscript Word or Scrivener. 3. Knowing that you do not need to pay for illustrations, unless you're ready to sell to a publisher. 4. Knowing the difference between actual publishing and vanity publishing. 5. Knowing that you need neither the best keyboard nor the best chair to write. 6. Not spending money on writing related chachkis. 7. Knowing that you do not need to pay for feedback. The internet will gladly give it for free. 8. Realizing that if your story is compelling enough, you don't actually need coffee. Cross stitch slash embroidery, it's fairly cheap in general, but once you have a few sets in, you have a wide variety of colors to do your own. Eater, whoa. Thanks for the silver. My first. Came here to say this. You can make embroidery expensive if you want. But if you don't it can be super cheap forever. I mean the MC floss is what? $0.75 per skein? Oddly enough, lasso making. Depending on the style of lace you're doing, the initial cost of tools can be fairly steep or super cheap. Some styles require a needle. Just a needle. But once you've got the equipment, you're only ever required to buy thread and maybe pins or paper. Okay, pattern books, but if you're even a little bit creative, you've got that covered. Source, used to make lace. Over the course of 15 years, I spent maybe $200. Not 200 a year, 200 spread over 15 years. And most of that was because I wanted specialty threads, like handspun linen, etc. Initially read this as lancer making, and am now in a wiki hole looking at medieval weaponry. I have nothing really to comment, just thought you should know one of the incredibly weird side effects of your reply. Smithing. It's always just as expensive. And nothing beats the feeling you get when you finish your first knife and cut something with it. Programming. You already have a computer, tablet, third ZTC and, if you need a dedicated device, a Raspberry Pi 4 is $100. Most tools are free. Open source tools are free forever. Internet is full of tutorials and examples. Yatub has a lot of courses in any field you like. Programming for fun has a competitive side too. Edit 1. For everyone asking about thirds. Yes. Smile Basic Edit 2. A more capable Smile Basic is now available on Switch to Edit 3. Gamified coding is a great way to practice and improve programming skills. Coding game is a great example of that.
I can't get into programming because I can't think of what I'd like to program. Like what is the end product I'm making? Stick collecting. No joke. It sounds dumb at first, but once you get a few solid sticks, you'll start to love it. You should see my arsenal. Alright dude you can't tease us like this, show us your stick collection. Geocaching. So easy. All you need is a few small trinkets and a geocaching resource. Playing cards. As long as those aren't magic, the gathering cards. Meditation. Haha, <laughs> one of the cheapest hobbies. But people manage to spend money on this too. Joining expensive courses, buying aesthetics like expensive candles, mats etc. Going on meditation retreats in high-end resorts in exotic locations. Reading. Having fun isn't hard when you got a library card. Searches through comments to find a new hobby edit. Thanks for the do nothing award. It'll continue doing nothing. Edit. 2. Platinum. You are way too kind stranger. Thank you. What did you find the most interesting? I downloaded Blender for third modeling myself. I've recently returned to 3D modeling. It's a hobby with a rock bottom price of entry you can invest in $10 to $20 at a time. You can start with Blender, a free and powerful program that lets you do everything from modeling and sculpting to texture painting and animating. Getting the fundamentals down is also free thanks to incredible tutors like Grant Abit and Andrew Price. After that, the world is your oyster. You can either throw a few bucks towards more in-depth tutorial courses or buy add-ons that enhance your workflow. You don't have to do any of that, though and can just let your creativity run wild. Edit, I'm pleased to see that this has blown up. If you want to learn more about third modeling on a budget, I suggest you download Blender from Steam or their official site. Blender also, here's an excellent beginner's course to help you get started for free. Yahtub alternately, you can try the fabled and updated donut tutorial. Yahtub also, be sure to check out the amazing work your fellow redditors are posting to subs like r slash blender. R slash algorithmic, r slash mayor, and r slash thread smacks edit too. For the people who are still checking this out, here are some more tidbits to clear up confusion. When I made this post, I was thinking specifically about 3D modeling for its own sake, as a relaxing hobby you do to unwind without thinking ahead. Picture yourself sitting down, creating a kitchen or a spaceship or a zombie dog for fun's sake, and feeling good about yourself. That can lead to commissioned work or 3D printing later on, but it absolutely doesn't have to if you don't want it to. Having good hardware helps, but isn't a prerequisite. Any computer made in the last 10 years is good enough to run Blender and let you pick up the fundamentals. Whether you want to upgrade after that is up to you, but you shouldn't need to unless you've gone way down the rabbit hole. Being artsy helps, but isn't a necessity either. Anyone can get into 3D with time and patience. I had to google to be sure, but I was taught by Grant a bit in high school. What a small world. Writing. All you need is a word document and your brain. Unless you're like me, who prefers iral writing, and now has a dragon's hoard of journals to write in. I hoard a bunch of empty notebooks. I'm so scared to write in those pretty empty pages and mess up. I started a podcast as a hobby with two friends that moved to different countries in 2018, and we are still going strong. We talk about different topics every couple of weeks and it's very fun. The only expense we have is the host website, but we only pay because we have uploaded many episodes and needed more cloud space, but it's still very cheap in comparison to other hobbies. If you need to save money could you not upload to Spotify slash Yatub or something similar that lets you do it for free. Weightlifting. Average person would even save a ton of money by fixing their diet as a side effect. I bought my own home gym 10 years ago. Paid to K used, had a few upgrades so $2,500 altogether. I have almost all the equipment needed, minus a leg press station. Over 10 years my gym would have cost me $20 a month a membership here runs about $80 I'm super strong and relatively healthy, I should jump on my elliptical more. For the first 5 years I also ate super healthy and lost a ton of weight. Eating healthy stopped me from eating out and also made my groceries inexpensive. I've been a little more lax now tougher with wife and kids around. Still have the gym though and still like lifting weights. 
who knows how many years I've extended my life. Which I guess will cost me money though. Duck edit I definitely wrote that out wrong I meant my gym cost me $20 a month over the 10 years. Gyms here start around $80 a month, plus gas and time and all the workouts I would miss. Gardening. If anything it becomes virtually free after a few harvests, because you can take the seeds out of the vegetables you just picked and replant them, plus you already have free compost from the remaining plant matter slash peels, etc, you picked. If you play your cards, right while there is an initial investment it'll pay for itself in the end. Lol nope, you get addicted to buying new plants. Edit, wow thanks for the silver, and other awards. Lock picking. That actually makes more money, if you're fast enough. Cycling in theory. Buy a bike and only have to pay for minor maintenance, while increasing fitness levels and happiness. However, one will quickly realize that the proper number of bikes to own is n plus 1 where n is the current number of bikes owned. Commuter bike, touring bike, race bike, full suspension trail bike, hardtail trail bike, aggressive hardtail trail bike, freestyle slash jump bike, fat bike, and a BMX for chisers and giggles. Collecting rocks that you find. Plus it keeps decorating costs down. Who needs some fancy knickknack to fill up a nook when I've got a large chunk of conglomerate or pegmatite will do. Origami. Bird watching? Bird watching $20 for a great field guide to your local birds $100 for a starter pair of binoculars dollar sign 40 dash 80 for a nice bird feeder set up at home then $500 for a decent spotting scope up to $1. 0004 high end slash Swarovski binus $8. 000 for a trip to Central America with guided forest tour $75. 000 for an RV. So you can travel America chasing rarities once you retire it really depends on your level of commitment. Game development. Unity is free, Visual Studio is free, Blender is free, Asaprite is $20, but also not necessary, but highly recommended. It's a really fun hobby, that doesn't have to cost anything, if you don't want it to, only your sanity. Optimizing your personal finances. Ah yes, my favorite hobby. Tied for first with my actual ducking job, doing dishes, and cleaning my bathroom. Hiking. I love getting lost in outdoor spaces. It inspires my creative work, and is generally free. Hiking is free, if you do short trips locally. But it does get more expensive the more you get into it. First you want to get a pair of decent boots at $150 to $200, and a decent day pack at around $100. Then you want the high tech clothing. Then you want to start doing overnight trips which means you need an entire set of backpacking equipment starting with a pack at $250 to $300 plus all the accoutrements needed to survive on your own, cooking set, tent, sleeping bag, etc. Then you want better equipment. Then you want to start going to lifeless destinations that require you to get on an airplane. It never ends. Exercising slash running. You only need to buy a good pair of shoes and some workout clothes and you'll be set for a while. Edit. Okay. My bad. Exercising is expensive. Sorry. I feel like everyone commenting is a marathoner or some other long distance runner, which at that point is more enthusiast than hobby. Most people running for general fitness are probably not doing more than 20 miles a week, and if you're just going out to run a few miles throughout the week and the occasional 5, 10k, then running is cheap. You might not even buy two pairs of shoes a year. Beyond that people just need to have the appropriate clothes, a stick of body glide, and maybe a water bottle. A summary of the comments, redditor1, names a cheap hobby redditors2213, you fool. This hobby is only cheap, until you buy a bunch of things related to this hobby, that the average person doesn't need to enjoy the hobby in the first place. Well to be fair, the op asked what hobby will not get more expensive as you dive in deeper into that specific hobby. Drawing. I use a pencil, a pen, and a sketchbook. It's possible to make drawing more expensive, better pens cost money, colored pencils cost money, digital art supplies cost money. But it's not necessary to buy those things in order to enjoy drawing. 
It may not be necessary, but once you get into drawing it's almost impossible to resist buying those expensive art supplies that you're never quite good enough to use and end up just accumulating dust for years. I found digital art to be the best, because once you've bought the tablet, there isn't much else you can buy to improve your art, except a better tablet. Extreme Couponing. Mom? Regardless of your hobby, the cost is inversely proportional to your self-control. The more self-control you have, the cheaper the hobby is. My hobby is getting addicted to new hobbies, spending loads of money on it, then losing interest. D&D. &D. Depending on how invested you get into it at the start, if you get all of the books you could easily spend over $100, but you can also find PDFs for a lot cheaper. After that, though, you just have to find people to play with, and you don't have to spend any more money. If you aren't buying a new dice set, and a special edition of a book every month then are you really playing D&D? &D? Learning languages? This is not Jeopardy. Answer with some balls. Hash learning languages. Playing an instrument. Once you have the instrument the price drops drastically edit. I wasn't thinking about how obsession factors into playing music as a hobby and that most people who play music will eventually want a higher end instrument. This is especially the case with western instruments and even more so with western orchestral instruments. The reason I specified western is because I, personally, play two Korean percussion instruments. One where a high-end version is probably $30, and the other where the high-end version is closer to $150. This is due to the fragility of both instruments, because no one wants to buy a dollar sign 500 plus one every few months year or so, when it breaks depends on frequency of play, and how hard you hit both. They're not supposed to be hit too hard. Nobody tell this guy about guitar pedals. Computer programming. Python is free, the modules are free, new modules keep coming out and getting better, for free. Plenty of resources out there, YouTube, Automata Thibbering Stuff.com, are free. A hobby that changes the way you see the world, and adds another method of problem solving. It gets you exposed to all kinds of other fields. Also it could land you a work from home job making great money, or save you time on completing repetitive boring tasks. Learning Python gets you a huge head start on learning other languages as well, but Python can be used for a whole project. It's vast. Deleted. Just log into YouTube and bam. Bird videos. Brilliant. I've been looking out in the woods like a chump. Disc golf. It's really fun, and you can buy discs for like $10 and that's pretty much all you need. Can't believe I had to get all the way down here to find this. Disc golf cost me about 30 to 50 dollars for the first 3 years. I just used the same discs, was gifted some. And even when I did decide to get more discs, it's incredibly reasonably priced. That and most courses of free access. Great sport. Swimming. Stay away from Warhammer 40k. You'll start with oh. Once I have my area set up, and my paints it's not so bad. Then one day you'll look at your army, and realize that, while Raven Guard is great, you really want to try an Elder Army. Eventually you'll feel, like you went through the warp without a Jella field. Oh your favorite army, weren't included in the updated rules. Dumpster diving. I'm guilty of peeking in dumpsters. Also a place I used to work at threw away stuff, because of a tear or something missing. I got a $200 vest for camping, and a chimney, because the stand was missing. Drug dealing. It's a trap. First you think oh well all I need, is to find a bulk connect, and I'll be set. Then you have a bunch of cash sitting around, and you need to move to a more secure area or find a safe house, then you need to hire some bodyguards. Then it turns out, the rival dealers are closing in on your turf, so you need to get more guns and more bodyguards, which naturally attracts the attention of the feds and local gov slash police who you need to pay off now, and just when you think you're set, your head bodyguard decides he wants to head over to the rival gang, because they have an awesome party pad with like tigers and hookers and stuff. So you need to get a tiger and hookers too to keep up. Before you know it, you're barely focusing on selling drugs anymore you just need to keep the party going, so you don't lose everything. Cliff diving. I never did it. Are there cliff divers who constantly invest in newer gear? 
Mitting. You could probably buy all the needles and other various gadgets you will ever need for $200. Then you only need to pay for the yarn for the project you are working on. There are loads of free tutorials online. I now have enough needles, patterns, and yarn that I go shopping in my stash in order to make something. It's free. But I spent a bit to get to this point. Body weight fitness, barefoot running, yoga, but obviously you can let costs accelerate if you have to to, to Mexico to run with Terra Humora or go to expensive yoga class locally or in India. With fitness videos on YouTube, all you need is an internet connection and enough floor space to lay down on. Skateboarding. It's very cheap so far. I do recommend buying a good quality board, not something from Walmart. But I've gotten a lot out of this board, and when I break the board, instead of paying another $140 for a whole new complete, I just have to buy a new deck for $30 to $65, and so on for the rest of the parts. Edit, just wanted to add to this how much I've loved skateboarding, since I started a couple months ago. I never thought I would do something like it, and I used to have horrible balance, but with some work my balance has become better than I could have dreamed, and I've had a ton of fun. All of my friends are starting now. If you really wanna make skateboarding cheap, make friends with other people who skate. It's intimidating from the outside, but the skateboarding community is often incredibly supportive. People often end up giving you decks, or wheels and sometimes entire boards, sometimes piling on tips and knowledge in the process. A total stranger gave me my current setup, which is all good hardware, and was brand new. You can also thrift lightly worn skate shoes, because you start going through them pretty fast eventually, so you can keep costs really low. Vans are incredibly popular right now and there's almost always a pair that will fit, if you go to a couple thrift stores. I've been skating for the past 5 years and really never spent full price on anything. Sometimes I've spent as little as $5 or $15 on vans. Sleeping. I have been trying to start this hobby, but I'm not very good at it. And it can get very expensive depending on commitment and personal preference. Daydreaming. Daydreaming is fun. Then you write it down, and then you have a story. Not a good one, but it's a story. Reading, library is free and there are always cheap books at garage sales, thrift shops, etc. Recreational maths, all you need is a brain. Oh, if I only had a brain. Walking around outside and picking up shiny stuff you find on the floor, sometimes known as goblining or magpieing. Reading books from the library, card tricks, shadow puppetry, pressing flowers, singing, stargazing. But stargazing leads to telescopes, telescopes leads to astrophotography, astrophotography leads to expensive setups to magnify and track seemingly empty areas of the night sky only to find, not the abyss, but stars, galaxies, nebulae, comets, planets, and satellites looking back at you. In short it is the path to the dark skies where you will seek higher and higher grounds to escape from light pollution. Browsing Reddit. Woodworking and metalworking once you get all of the tools you need, price dramatically goes down. When I had a wood shop, there were always more things to buy. Nicer fence for the table saw, wider planer, fancy dovetail jig. Like most good hobbies, thinking about and acquiring new toys for it is half the fun. Fun fiction. As long as you already have a computer, you're good to go, because it's actually illegal to make money off of it, to do so would be copyright infringement. Tell that to E.L. James. Playing chess. Aquariums and aquascaping. If you don't fall victim to the way people try to flex, when you can use natural resources to recreate natural habitats, since that's basically the goal. Potting soil and ingenuity trumps adder tanks and expensive lights. Just trying to make a sanctuary for my fish not flex on the gram. This is so true. Same thing with bioactive vivariums for reptiles. It cost me $500 to do my crested gecko 70 gallon vivarium. It cost me about $40 for my 75 gallon blue tongued skink vivarium once I realized Home Depot sells most of what I need. Pixel art. 
Unlike other graphic design methods where you might need expensive software like Photoshop or Illustrator, you can use Manuscript Paint or a variety of free software, even for animation. D it's a great hobby, because the pixels limit where you can place them, finite number of combinations and such, and refining techniques with color palettes, lighting, blending, etc. There is so much you can do. Russian Roulette. Yeah, but that could lead to a funeral. Funerals are expensive. Reenactment and owning armor in general. When you get a solid kit together that's all you need, until you want to rep a new period, or see a beautiful set of pauldrons, or see a lovely kaftan to add to your kit that it a slightly different shade of wool, and has some awesome silk trim, or, you know what? Never mind. Don't listen to me. Learn to smith your own. Just need to keep pieces small, get a good hammer and anvil, and you can even build your own forge. Procrastination. It seems cheap at the beginning, but it can get really expensive really fast. W. Walking? I've been practicing this hobby every day for my entire life. I love it. Homemade salsa. A food processor is the most expensive thing you'll buy. R slash salsa snobs, if you want to learn. It's not hard. Violin. Cheaper ones, albeit having less optimal sound quality, are dirt cheap. If you happen to really get into it, several years later, a better one is going to cost a bit more, but violins last basically forever, except a few occasional string slash bow fixes. I've had the same two for almost 11 years now. Edit, as some people mentioned, violins can indeed go into several tens of thousands dollars and above, if you're looking at top quality violins with deep history. But these are really only for people who play violin for living, and require the best tool they can get. For a hobby, I think several hundred to thousands is good enough. Underrated comment here. Originally my son wanted to try, so I got a $99 Amazon one. His teacher told me when he was ready for a good one, and when I got that, roughly 750, full 4 over 4, I started learning on his old one. His sounds much better, but I can at least make music. We are currently trying to learn the violin part of the Avengers theme for fun lol. Collecting elf memorabilia. Nobody wants it and it never gets more expensive for my GD brother-in-law to buy me more worthless junk for birthdays and Christmas. He thinks it's funny every time, so the laughs are cheap too. Crying. I'm lucky in that most of my hobbies save or generate money. Programming this has become my career, but I started out making games and mobile apps that did okay, and still generate income today. Writing I've had about 10 professional sales, not a lot of money, but all I had to invest was my time. Cooking slash baking saves on restaurants, and generally results in better healthier food. Gardening grow your own ingredients. I live in a condo, but I grow herbs and hot peppers I put those in everything. Biking save on transportation costs, and get some exercise. The commute to work went from the worst to the best part of my day. The upfront cost of a good bike can be high, but it pays for itself. Scuba diving okay this is expensive haha. <laughs> I know it can be an income generator or a career, but it's a bigger investment of time and money to get there. Baking. No expenses beyond flour, salt and water. Especially true if you are using sourdough culture and no need techniques which obviate the requirement for a stand mixer. I've made bread that needed to be kneaded, and just did it by hand. You can feel the gluten development better anyway. Rollerblading. One time expense, then upgrade wheels and bearings if you please, and you're all set to keep up with the bikers. Computer programming. The cost spikes at the beginning, to get the right software, if you don't use the free stuff that's just as good a mo, but then that's it. Or just download Python, free and open source, and start writing, google it if you're stuck. Zero cost. ITHNK I'll go with weightlifting. If it's just a hobby, what you're faced with is a one-time large purchase as you buy your axe, bench, plates and other gear. But after that, that's kind of all you need. Hard to go wrong, when your equipment is all solid metal, stuff doesn't break that easily. Thanks to everyone for helping me realize how expensive all my hobbies are. Collecting rocks. Minerals. Starcraft 2. 
free to play. It's the only video game I've played for the last 3 years. And I still suck. Bouldering. Of course if you do sport climbing, or especially weed climbing, you can keep buying more gear forever. But for bouldering, all you need is climbing shoes and chalk, and if you're going outside then a crash pad. If you have those three things you can boulder forever. I mostly agree, but you can spend a bit of money before you're done diving into bouldering. Most people I climb with have multiple crash pads, multiple pairs of shoes, a gym membership, and are constantly spending money on bouldering trips. Eventually you realize you need a van for all the traveling slash camping you're doing, and your friend convinces you to go to South Africa to climb Rocklands. I've spent way too much money on bouldering. You definitely don't need to, but if you want to dive into it you certainly can. Cooking, specifically plant-based cooking. The longer I have worked toward cooking with this diet, the more money I save. I now find it hard to believe there is a cheaper diet, in the United States at least, if you're cooking consistently. I wanted to say cooking, but there always seems to be another cooking gadget to buy to make something new. Although, if you enjoy it, there is not much you can't make with the basic tools and time. PC gaming can be deceptively affordable. You can get a machine that's probably going to outshine the PS5 and Xbox for around $500, and by that point you can play virtually any computer game that's ever existed. The PC's greatest strength isn't its graphics or modding. It's its astronomical backlog of treasures. I try to explain to people all the time how much cheap a PC is. I built my computer in 2011 and just have incrementally upgraded since. No part 1 have today is from 2011, but I have never done a fresh rebuild, and I always sell off my old parts on eBay to get some of my money back. Shoplifting. It's basically free, you can steal things to help you steal more things. What would you steal to help make stealing easier? DIY it starts off fairly cheap, you just need a drill, a handsaw, and a hammer. Then you start adding a bunch of more expensive tools and power tools, which is expensive for a while. But then you have all the tools and only need to replace one occasionally, and your only cost is materials. Which you would have paid for anyway, if the job needs doing. And more importantly, you save a ton of money on labor for house maintenance. So once you're half decent at it, you'll save far more than you spent. Even if you end up spending $1000 on tools, you can make that back on one job you can do yourself, build yourself a deck or a shed, and you've probably broken even already. Starts planning to build a house. Painting like Bob Ross once you get the paints at your good, you're not gonna realize you need better quality equipment than you're already using. I have a bunch of the official joy of painting instructional books. Maybe I could try it. Oh my. You watched until the end? That's ducking awesome dude. Thanks for watching.